Welcome to the PR subcommittee of the Fitchburg Cultural Council. Um, I call this meeting to order at uh, 4.35 p.m. Oh, I just realized since Matt is not here, we need a volunteer to uh, take notes. Would anyone be willing to take notes? I'll volunteer. Thank you, Eileen. Um, this meeting is being recorded and streamed live on Facebook and available on demand at fatv.org. Please keep in mind that, um, please keep that in mind when making comments and be aware of how your screen may appear and that our meetings are open to the public. So first on our, on our agenda is FCC TV, our next episode. Um, so we agreed that um, to tape the next episode Tuesday, August 3rd at 4.30 p.m. Um, the plan is for it to be our school's episode. Um, I was thinking of uh, reaching out to all of uh, the school programs and um, having them on the show. Um, originally, I was thinking it would be fun to do a roundtable discussion and then have that as one interview. And then the second interview, um, or a second section interviewing some after school programs. Uh, but that might be a little bit ambitious. Um, How many over, schools would that be? Or, or would it be high school, middle school? Um, it would be Applewild if they are um, still gonna do their program this fall. But what um, age? Uh, well, Applewild is uh, K through nine. K through um, nine, there's okay. St. Bernard's. Um, Fitchburg High School and Sizer School. So that's four schools. And I believe St. Bernard's um, had two um, FCC funded programs, whereas the other ones had just one. Um, so we, the alternative could be that we just have them each on individually and they could each bring like one to two guests. Um, in which maybe they could, it could be like the teacher that facilitated the program and maybe a student to talk about how great it was. Um, or we could have that as a round table discussion and also hit um, the after school programs, which was the um, Boys and Girls Club of Lemonster and the after school program at Green Acres. So and that would be a lot of so guests. So you might, you might have these four schools that you've named, or you might have after school programs. Is that what you're thinking? I'm thinking either have four after uh, four school programs um, with no, uh, with just one guest each and have a round table mm -hmm. discussion and then have the after school programs as well. Or okay, we so. take our time with um, each of the four. Uh, programs of the school and then do after school of some other episode. I would I would go for the simplest um, yeah. at least complicated method of doing that which would be one one school representing and follow with the next school for the next um, presentation. All right, and, I think and so forth yeah i think that makes sense from any thoughts derek yeah from a production standpoint too with <clears throat> with the four cameras set up and then a limited number of mics i think uh separating them is is the better option sounds good we'll do uh the after school program some other time then they might well, have it's... more to say too when things get going the after yeah. school programs I know one of them, their program has already passed. Actually, both of them, their programs might have already passed, but the idea is kind of like, um, it will air in August. Um, and so as parents are, you know, enrolling their kids in schools and after school programs, I wanted to kind of, um, you know, let them know what kind of things are offered. Oh, okay. But I agree that it would be more complicated. Um, trying to do the after school programs <laughs> as well. And I, I, I'll just put my two cents in like I often do. Um, you like it? With the, 
uh, with the, the student, I'm talking about the student representatives. Uh, it's gonna be wonderful to have one teacher, maybe two teachers and two student reps from the same school. Derek, what do you think about that having four guests on, on set with one host? Uh, yeah, I think that's fine. Um, I, I don't see why not. We, we, you know, just same thing we've been doing, just host on one side, guests on the other. We already had the three guests for the um, Abolitions Park, and that seemed to be fine. So adding a fourth a fourth kid, I don't think would be a problem. Okay, so I'll offer up to four. Hi, Tamar. Yeah. Hi, Tamar. Welcome. <clears throat> Hi, Tamar. We are, right now, we're just on the first bullet point. We're talking about FCC TV, and we're talking about the, um, the next episode, um, schools. Um, we are talking about... Uh, for our next, next guest, just being the schools, we're not gonna to try to cover the after school programs as well, just the schools and having um, up to four guests mm -hmm. um, per yeah. interview. Yeah. Well, even one I think would be okay, you know, five or six if, we, if the kids wanna join, because I think that, you know, that would be really fun to have uh, the young young people on set and something that gets them excited. And, and then their parents are gonna watch it and, uh, you know, and their aunts and uncles are gonna watch. So it'll definitely get eyes on screen from a, from a production value standpoint. Okay, I guess at that point, then it could just be like a bunch of people just standing there, right? Yeah, totally. Um, and I don't know if we have, there's got to be, I'm sure if ATV has a, uh, like a holdable mic too that maybe we could pass around. I don't know if Nate, you can chime in at this point, but um, yeah, we could always have a mic to be passed. I'm not sure how many uh, lav mics are, are there. Guess I'll, I'll, I'll uh, talk to Nate tomorrow about that. And can I have one more comment on that? Uh, we're assuming if uh, the, stu the students and the teachers uh, would like to join the taping, perhaps for whatever reasons, the, the parents have the last say and they might not be on board with it. So they'll you know. they'll really have to get um like a some sort of waiver. I bet the school will like yeah. um waiver. I'm sure will have to be involved. Okay. So it, again, you know, the more people, the more complicated it's going to get. But um, right. You know, working working with young people is always uh, always pretty fun. It is fun. I wonder if like a waiver is something that we would provide or the school would provide. I think think there is. I mean, there are kids being interviewed uh, for FA in the past, and I'm sure that there is a doc and a release already in place. I would think I, the TV station would have a release too. I, I have some as well from uh, past, past productions. Okay. Derek, do you think you could uh, take on that task? Getting the waivers? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think um, first somebody's got to reach out to the school yeah, in touch with them and then get a, get a feel for how many kids might want to be involved. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll attach you to the emails when I reach out to the, t um, to the schools. And yeah, if uh, they want to have students on there, then you'll know what to do. Sure. I could actually go to the school department and get the information that we're talking about. Um, do we, I mean, I'm thinking that this is more of like a press, uh, like, you know, a likeness waiver, um, of whether or not, I mean, the schools might already have them, but they might not right. It'll also be like, they're not going to just say, just volunteer students to join them. They're going to reach out to the students and the parents to make sure that they're even available. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, so, well, I mean, uh, if Derek, you, um, you think that would be helpful, maybe the two of you, um, you and Claudia could collaborate on that. Sure. Um, Is okay, Derek so, mute? Go ahead. I was, yeah. What's up? Yeah. 
Um, Dara, Claudia, up in the corner here. <laughs> and the two of us are going to uh, get the necessary uh, permissions and waivers for the uh, televising of, of children and their parents. Of course, yeah. Or uh, teachers. We haven't, um, I don't think we've been doing uh, release forms at all so far for the first, uh, I think it'll more, it'll more be- uh, Send waivers for- True. Um, okay, do we like doing this thing where we schedule the next, um, the next show per, like we just, as leading up to it, or do we want to schedule in advance? Like for um, Sept September's taping, do we want to talk about availability for that or just tackle that one when, when it gets closer? I think it would be good to schedule them in advance so you have a calendar. So that if people meet one, miss one, they know where the next one, or if they hear about it, oh, I'd like to watch that. There's a place where they can find out. But if they don't know till right before, it's not gonna help very much with an audience. And it could be really helpful for the grantee reception to just have like a sign-up sheet. Yes, um, I think so too. <clears throat> um, all right. So after August 3rd, um, we could do, I mean, obviously we have to ask FATV if it's okay, um, but. This could, might be something better off worked off, work done on offline and then brought to the group next month with the full calendar thing. I'm just, in, I know that we're, our time is limited on FATV. Yeah. We spent an awful lot of time on Let's, this particular thing. Everyone think about that. And I feel like it would be okay to discuss schedules on August 3rd, like next time we meet up for taping. Okay. Sound good? Sounds good. Um, excellent. Uh, does anyone else have anything else to say about FCC TV? Tomorrow, um, the summer concerts episode will air. So check that out at, um, at 8 p.m. And the following week, if I can get it all finished up tomorrow um, or the next couple of days, uh, the episode four will air um, next week. what? The um, episode four, uh, which is, I don't remember right now because <laughs> my <laughs> mind's a fog right now. Um, we will have two episodes air a week uh, back to back. Okay, so there are episodes coming. Have pity on your, uh, yeah. your uh, <laughs> publisher uh, here. <laughs> so, um, Fitchburg Open Studios is next. Um, Tamar, do you want to take it? So the only thing that I need to talk about is the brochure, which we're working on. And the fact that we have we have quite a few people, which is great, but the only question we have, which is something we have to vote on next week is if we wanna ask for last minute sponsorship. So funds from anyone in the community. Um, I know that was a question. Um, I had one from you, Jesse, I think about that. I don't know if you wanna jump in. Um, well, I'm not at work this week, but I think we, I could probably request a paid something from the museum. So this is kind of interesting. We've never done it before. Um, and I'm sorry for any background noise. I'm somewhere where I can't really change that right now. Um, so in the past, we would just ask for funds from any organization that wanted to give us some funds and they could give us whatever they wanted to donate. And we put that in the kitty for marketing. So this year, we like we're getting something from New View. We got something from a private individual in the community. And then of course we've gotten space from people, including the art museum, Boulder, the churches. Um, the city actually offered us one of the conference rooms if we wanted to have a pop-up there. So we've got plenty of space this year. So you know, in the past we would consider that sponsorship, right? But we've also, we got fun, funds the last time from the friends of the library. And I don't really have a contact there and one of the friends 
So it came through, I think Peter um, or Lisa had asked them for some funds. They gave us a hundred dollars as a contribution and we put that towards the brochure production. So this year we have 300 so far from the community. So something I think the museum was asking us was about ads. If we wanted to actually put ads in the brochure, we absolutely can. We don't have an ad sheet rates or any of that this year. So I'm kind of open to if anybody that you are familiar with would like to just donate something, that's great. And if they want an ad, Jesse, absolutely, we'll put in an ad and there's no set rate. So anything they wanna donate would be great. And maybe that's something we can build out for next time because it's a little late at this point. One of the things you and I were talking about this, I, it might be just too late to do this, but one of the reasons we were bringing it into town was so that all the new restaurants and everything would get, uh, get some clientele. And so I was thinking, I know you've got more work to do to, to put the, um, the whole brochure together, but maybe we could do a little card to stick in the brochure, maybe ask each restaurant for $100 a piece if they'd like their name in that and, and you know, explain to them. Um, and, and I'd be willing to uh, walk around town and, uh, um, you know, talk to people about it. Um, or we could make a spot on the map so it's all one piece so it's not lost. We could make a section that's our restaurant sponsors and we can list there. How, how much time would you need to get that, uh, you know, to get your- So get it, my uh, goal is to have this done by the end of the month. So how that's gonna happen- July? Yeah, because oh, we dear. need to have it printed by the grantee reception, which is the 13th of August. I, real quick, just to, to uh, go on that, uh, Eileen and Tamar, is it too late for some of these restaurants to cater and like get themselves out there with small, dishes and stuff you mean at the open studios yeah anything could be done i think we just have to let them know that it's going on right. you know i think we really have to do some proselytizing <laughs> but that can be done you know later it doesn't have to do with uh, right right so, I'm just, know, the, the brochure so just based on how the restaurants are participating in first thursdays and recognizing that they are also coming out of a rough year um i think what Marissa has been able to coordinate with the downtown restaurants for first Thursdays is they've had either like, well, River Sticks can offer a discount because you can't discount beer, but they offer a discount on their merchandise. They either had a coupon or like a free app or something like that. So it's sort of something to get people to come in there, but they there's some sort of special thing that could happen that weekend. So I think that is something that is a little more affordable for them at this point, but it, it's also just an inducement for people to walk in. So um, so for first Thursdays, we at the museum, we've had little postcards or business cards that we hand out to people who come in. And that way, after they're at the museum, they can walk down the street and go to Kingston Island or go to River Sticks and have whatever the deal is. So what do you give them? Is it already something printed up saying they're in the program or? So for first Thursdays, we actually, and maybe we should even consult with Marissa because there is a prototype. We have a map of downtown and she, she has every location, the escape rooms is on there too. So everything that's on there is numbered and that includes Mill Street and includes the museum and that, and it's using the city's new um, brand. Um, so so on that so it, it's a map of where everything's located and on the back she's listed place like if there's if there's a dj or there is a special something happening at the restaurant it's on the back as whatever is happening there is it printed or is it like what is the it's just it's just a eight, by eight and a half by i we just run them off on the copier and they're just a oh. flyer basically but they're colorful and they're easy to hand out and um well, I, I'm, I'll volunteer to call. Who is Marissa? I volunteer to call Marissa. And, Marissa Montero. Uh, oh, here we go. Yeah. Get you look over here. There we go. Can you guys see that? I that, see what it is. Yeah, I can see yeah. it. it she's actually one that someone. That I think we should probably invite her into the next meeting because she is the downtown event coordinator. And I know she is looking to this as something 
I, I think she's just somebody we should probably invite into the conversation anyway, because she might have resources we're not thinking about. And she's she's well connected with all the business and restaurant owners downtown. I think that's a great idea. I mean, this is something we could do extra outside of the program so we don't hold the program up. Right. Yeah. And just, just to be clear, I, I, when I say cater, I mean, we pay like we would pay at the very least the costs. You know, I don't know how much is in our funds, but. I definitely don't want them just showing up and giving out free stuff. Um, I'm not sure how we would include catering in the event. It would be a very different than what we're currently doing. Right, right. What has been done in the past. We're having uh, some pop-ups at our church and there's a caterer in the basement of our church. So they intend to be part of it. They will be catering there while people come and look at the pop-ups. And we're also gonna have an organ concert could be sort of like inviting uh, the restaurants to be part of open studios and have free samples maybe? Yeah, could be, or they could do or something they could pay. Front. I think if we, as I say, we still have to proselytize. We've got to go around and talk to them. So, and say, we'd love you to be part of it. Just tell us how you want to do it. So then we can make up a list and say, you know, if you, if you want spare ribs, go here. If you, <laughs> so anyway, so that's where I'm at with open studios. Um, right now, just trying to, there's a couple applications I still have to get from Peter um, uh, and get those to city hall with the funds uh, and then we have to get it approved and printed. So just trying to make sure we get done by the end of the month. So if anybody wants to, knows if someone wants to run an ad, um, Jesse, if the museum wanted to do that, I certainly could put one in for any amount would be great, is fine. So and then next, year, next year, I can do an actual like um, ad sheet. We can actually think about, you know, what yeah. it costs to have an how ad, many, series of ads. How many artists do you have, Tamar? Um, that's a good question. And I don't know off the top of my head. And I'm sorry, I'm not prepared with that today. Oh, okay. I was but trying to turn, can, it's for my minutes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, wow. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 26. And then the Women's Caucus, I counted them as one, but there's about- There's, there's gonna be six of them yes, at so least. That's, so yes. that's close to 30. Yeah, that's awesome. We'll say, we can say nearly, that is awesome. Tamar, uh, we got an email from Jason Fitzgerald who said that he was interested. He missed the deadline a little bit, but he was hoping to be added on there. And um, well, if he could just drop his application at the Boulder Gallery and we'll add him right away, we'll take him. All right. You or I will reply to his email about that. And I know that I sent an architect from Main Street over to you too. Yeah. And I think that's already, he's been added already. Fantastic. It's Bill, awesome. Bill Lorigan. Yes, that's it. He's at it. We need an image. Okay. <laughs> and also there's a shop at the end of, uh, on the common called Magic Treasures. Peter Capadegli walked over to her and asked her if she would sign up and she did. So that's really nice. So she's brand new to town, I guess. So that's exciting. So we're in good shape. My goal is the end of the month for everything to get in the brochure so I can get it to FSU to get them to print it so we have it ready for the grantee reception. That's where we're at. Great, great. Awesome. All right, anything else for um, Open Studios? All right, grantee reception community input. Um, so um, I put together a, here, let me see if I can share this. This is just my notes. I don't know how like formal these really look and if it, it's embarrassing that I'm sharing this on TV, but. Um, so I was thinking the order of events. Um, we welcome them. We state the purpose of the event to honor our grant recipients and receive input on art, science, and humanities mm -hmm. needs for our community from, um, for our community from the community. Um, Maybe we can invite everyone, um, everyone um, from the FCC to come on to come on the stage, talk about who the um, Pittsburgh Cultural Council is, what our purpose is, what we do. We're looking for new members, um, 
and uh, talk about our grant season, uh, our funding, uh, how, uh, how much money that we were given last year and how many grants uh, we funded. Um, and then I thought that our way of honoring uh, the grant recipients, we could call up each, uh, list each grants recipient program um, if they're there, have them stand up so people can applaud and maybe they can say a couple sentences about what they do or, or we just say it ourselves. Um, and then, uh, and let them know that uh, we will have a camera in the back um, in which people can go in there and talk about their program. Also members of the public can talk about the um, grant reception or whatever, I don't know, or what they think about arts and culture in Fitchburg. Um, tell them about Fitchburg Open Studios. Have guest speakers, maybe invite the mayor to, um, to our event to speak, um, other uh, politicians or members of the, um, uh, well-known members of the community to um, talk about the cultural council and the things that we're doing. Um, and then, then uh, like the last hour, uh, uh, facilitate a conversation, what kind of arts and science and humanities pro um, projects uh, the community wants us to prioritize for that. What do you guys think? I think it sounds good. I think um, it would be nice if Claudia if you're available to have an, if we had an open, like a um, reception table where we can have different things about like the brochures, for example, for if anybody, of you know, other, the grantees want to put things there, they could also, like if they have flyers or the museum has applications for members, or we could have like a nice welcome table and maybe Claudia could be there. And um, also Miriam had asked about she emailed just me, so I, I, I thought she would be here today, but she had, I just really quickly wanted to read her note. She said, if we'll be having beverages or food, um, and in this case, she wanted to find out if the rest of restaurants would be willing to donate, and she said she would be willing to put some energy and efforts into helping us with that part. So I thought maybe, Claudia, if Miriam and yourself maybe could yes. work together. Um, I thought that would be really helpful. And then maybe if you guys could man the table and yeah. sort of a welcome table, I thought that would be a really nice mm -hmm. item to have. Audrey. Can yeah. you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, okay. Because I hit a button about 10 minutes ago and went away. <laughs> oh, you're back. The only one who went away was Jesse. <laughs> Did you get rid of Jesse? <laughs> no, there she is. There She's she is. back now. <laughs> Claudia, if you need any help doing that, I'm happy to help too. The okay. table and greetings and that sort of thing. Well, I, I still uh, I have a, my project of the um, gift bags. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I, that I've been collecting here and there. Um, I have chalk. I have Teddy Grahams. I have uh, small eight ounce bottles of water because if you put anything bigger than that, you know, it's, whether the children take them or the adults, I can't put too many more things in it because they'll be carrying around like a brick, right? Yeah. The, the weight of a brick. So uh, I'm working on that and uh, not to put Audrey on the spot, but I would love to have do a sticker um, that you were creating to put on these white uh, gift bags. Um, I have not looked into that yet, um, but I think that's a lovely idea. I know that for our email address, we have a circle version of our logo. Uh, maybe we could just turn that into a sticker the, or we any, could do the FCC TV logo, which is already a circle as well. Whatever it is, it, it would just uh, identify um, a, a, just one more part of who we are. 
uh, with little goodies in the bag. Mm -hmm. I noticed that you um, had a piece in there about the FCC TV camera being there. Were we planning to interview people or were we planning to, what's the purpose, just filming for future use? Yeah, so um, one I, um, I've i requested from FATV to borrow um, a couple cameras that we can just set up and like, uh, so that we, maybe I can splice together a like grantee reception episode. That's just, you know, if you weren't there, this is what happened at the event. Um, and also, um, I requested that Derek, uh, or, or I can also just, uh, requ uh, ask for a third camera as well from FHEV, but, um, Derek was going to be the camera operator and Casey was going to, um, interview, uh, grantee, res uh, recipients, um, about their program so that we can have that footage and, you know, if they can't make it to the studio at um, we can shoot like a five minute thing of them talking about it. And yeah. We want to do that outside or should we make space available inside to do that? Just as I'm starting to do more events in our courtyard, I am yeah. aware of whenever a motorcycle or a siren or anything mm -hmm. goes by, there's a lot of sound interference. Um, so we could either set up the lobby has a lot of echo we could set up the instant gallery which has acoustic panels um and then you have easier access to power too yeah um i think that would be nice uh derek what do you think uh yeah so i'm uh i'm just gonna flow i just have like a little dslr and a shotgun mic that goes right on top it's really small carried around no problem so i'm kind of just gonna float around and uh just catch what I see and, and get the interviews really quick. Maybe when they come in, um, we, when they enter, we can just interview them real quick or just let them know, hey, got, you know, when you have some time, take a couple minutes and talk about your, your programs and the things you guys are doing and really anything. We can talk about art, what inspires them, um, you know, why. That's why, great. Why do they I do, love that. What they do. Mm. Uh, and, we'll, and Audrey and I will cut something together and maybe make it into like a little FCT, FCC TV on the road or something like that, you know, FCC TV on the fly. Uh, sounds great. Yes, awesome. it does. That's more ambitious than what I was thinking. So fantastic. <laughs> oh yeah, and I realized that on the thing I said, FCC, FCC TV camera in the back. It's also talk about FCC TV. <laughs> okay, I didn't um, know, but I think that's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm happy no, that- No, I, I forgot to mention it when I said it. And I'm happy to MCC and do like the, whatever you'd like me to do at the beginning. Yeah. I'm happy, happy, was planning on doing that. Um, and then I think having the mayor is a great idea and I'm happy to ask him. Awesome. Um, is there anyone else that you think that we should reach out to? Uh, Jesse, I, I was oh, just okay. gonna ask, would Nick say something? Would he be available to say something? I, his vacation starts that, mm. <laughs> he might we'll see he basically his vacation starts that monday so i don't know how happy he'll be about it, but but we it, it doesn't hurt to ask okay yeah. well is it possible to do it in advance of his vacation tape it just a little hey, we blurb will a, um we will have a slide going on a, a, pro, a production um a powerpoint going on and so we could probably just put up a video hmm. so then we think that would be fun and interactive would that be good anything in particular i was sort of like since we're on museum property i was sort of thinking it might you know the, the chamber just the chamber just did a video from the museum. It's like a five minute video. It's like a tourism ad, but it, it interviews um, our curator. Um, it was right in the middle of our in bloom. So I, I did a little spot, but it, it, the curator spoke really well and our education person. So it, it, it's a good overall narrative in the museum. 
How okay. bad if he says something nice about us, how important yeah, we, FCC yeah. is to the community and that sort of <laughs> I thing. Mean, I yeah. mean, that's what I'd like to see. Yeah, I thought it would be nice. He could comment, you know, on the grant that the museum received and that you're happy to have us. At least I hope you're happy to have us. And then maybe- And how I important know. art and culture is to yeah. the rebirth of our city. I could write it for him. <laughs> I'm sure he, he would have anything. This, it's just, I know, just, it might be the timing of his vacation, but I think it, we can ask. It doesn't hurt to ask. So. Okay. Um, Tamar and Eileen, have you, uh, you two want to think about people who you think would be good guest speakers to talk about the cultural council and uh, what, you know, talk about, you know, what we've been doing and stuff and our importance in the community or whatever. Also, I think uh, probably it would be good to have Veronica um, come in or someone from Mass Cultural Council. I think that would be nice. Actually, you know what would be nice, Eileen? Yeah. We invite Louise. Louise, yes. That would be fun to have Louise. He mm -hmm. hasn't been returning my phone calls lately. Uh -oh. I don't know what the problem is, but I'll try to get back to him. Maybe by, I, I, the question I asked him, you know, went beyond the line or something. I have to be careful about that. But um, I'll well, try Well, maybe again. if you could try, we could ask him to come. Yeah, Is I think he should come. Council? Yeah, he's yeah. okay. Perfect. So I'll ask him to come. We'll get somebody from the council. Why don't I take that on? If he can't come, we'll talk and see who else could come. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah, I I saw somewhere that part of um, either the grant reception or the I think the grant reception it's honoring both the guests, but also I mean honoring both the grantee re recipients, but also the council as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. Yeah. Um, and then uh, yeah, um, I will send out invites to our grantees. Um, I'm playing around with two different options. Um, let me share them on screen. Um, they're digital cards, which I think is really neat. I might splurge and pay, like, you know, uh, put the money forward myself um, to, for it to be digital and a little envelope is with it and the card comes out, which is cool. But this is the text that I have. Very nice, I really like it. Awesome. Thank you, Derek. <laughs> Thank you, Eileen. It's cute, I like the greens. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I do too. Can you mm -hmm. add our logo? Um, I'm not sure if I can. The other option is, let me see if I can do this one. It has the logo up here. That's, yeah, I like the logo. And then next. Then, yeah. Do you guys like that one better or the previous one? I like having the logo. <laughs> okay. I think I it's important to have the logo. Although yes. I like the previous one. Can't you put that in the logo? Those are two different companies. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, the other thing is, as a newcomer to this town, I think we use too many um, initials. And, um, you know, the, the FAM is the Fitchburg Art Museum. So I really think the first, you know, the first time you mention the Fitchburg Art Machine, it should be the whole thing. And then if you want to do the FAM or FCC or that. It took me a I'm while to figure out when I, when I moved to town, it took me a while. What's, what's this FAM? Is that a family thing? <laughs> First time it's mentioned, it says that it's at the Fitchburg Art Museum, but I could do Fitchburg Art Museum parentheses fam so that the next time it's rock prints. Yeah, yeah, that might be better. About. Okay. Um, uh, oh, uh, Jesse, did anyone reach out to you about drinks or alcohol? Like, can we do anything like that or? Um, if I'm in the middle of extending uh, the application, if my application for serving alcohol in the courtyard is accepted by the licensing board, yes. 
When will Otherwise, you find out? Um, hopefully by August. <laughs> um, but we, I mean, we can, so I, we had an event last Friday that I think is going to change a lot of our controls, but we haven't had a chance to regroup. Um, but I could still have a bar inside if there's not one outside. Okay. Okay. And uh, would it be uh, the kind of deal where we have to hire our own uh, licensed bartender and then provide our own like bottled and canned drinks or what? Um, if it's a cash bar and, and the museum can make the money, I can bartend. Oh. Yeah. Cash bar sounds like a good option. That makes sense. I think that so too, easy. yeah. Make it easy. So that also, would be an option regardless. Yeah. So you'll be the bartender, Jesse? I was, I, I, I frequently. <laughs> I remember you were the last time I went yeah. to it. And you did a great job. Okay, so do we wanna add, uh, so then we, um, we'd we have to add on our shopping list is buying drinks though, right? Well, no. or, or do you guys have your own alcohol we, I, I I have to restock the bar for events in August, so. So we'll have we'll have our wine and beer. Okay. And so awesome. and usually I have seltzers and maybe lemonade for soft drinks. That simplifies things a little bit for us. Yeah, that makes it very easy. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, and next week, um, Jesse and I are gonna try to meet up at the art museum, her being the fam event coordinator just to uh, check out the seating plan, table plan or whatever, and uh, talk about anything else we might've missed that involves planning an event. Um, if anyone wants to come with me to be trained by FATV on using their cameras offsite, um, let me know and we'll coordinate um, since I want to borrow a couple cameras uh, for uh, the grantee reception, uh, have, we have to be trained for it in advance. Um, all right. Might be helpful. You could borrow a few FATV volunteers to do that. They would be better at it. They would be. And well, also they FAT wouldn't be like running around doing other things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how that works. <laughs> uh, well, it's worth inquiring about. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe it could even be something that we include in our budget to pay for them to come or something like that. Well, we already have one person doing it. Do we need more than Derek? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds I just good. don't want them to bump into each other. Is there? <laughs> yeah. We'll be um, fine. <laughs> anything else about the grant reception? Okay, so we also had planned the creative meet and greet to be right before Fitchburg Open Studios the night before. Yes. Um, does anyone want to volunteer to tackle that? Because it's not exactly on my radar right now. What would we like to do, do you guys think? Well, the way I envision it is everybody who's, as many people as we can who are going to be showing would come and, um, it would be for them. What do you think, Tamar? Do you think they would show? Well, they probably, they would probably be needing to put up their pop-ups on Friday. Is that? Do you think that's true? Um, I think a lot of people are going to do that. I don't know about the museum. Uh, okay. I think people are going to love if they have the option to do it a day in advance. But they probably would do that maybe a little earlier if the museum allows. I don't know. And then having something I, in the evening is kind of nice. I don't know what's going to be possible, Jesse, or do they have to do it the day of? No, they can, um, we've, we've done it that Friday before. And one of them, one of our spaces is an actual studio. So that's not open to the public. Okay. Um, the church is going to allow them to come in Friday, the Friday before and set up. Actually, we are, um, We'll be wrapping up our 
installation of the fall show that Friday. So I think that's not going to be a problem. People can come. It's just going to be general chaos. <laughs> general chaos. So, yeah. So for the meet and greet, are, are we going to do that? Should we change it and make it a little different and have it elsewhere? Or should we keep it at the museum? Like, if you have it, so the problem, if you have it at the museum, then the people who are using the gallery won't be able to set up the day before. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, I see. That, that's the event space and we won't have a tent. Well, I can't say we'll have a tent. We might have a tent, but I'm not gonna promise. <laughs> um, but yeah, our, our event space is what is going to be used as a studio space. Um, I mean, we could have in the courtyard. We, I just, like I said, it's not, if it rains, I can't promise. What other spaces are around town? Well, I was going to suggest maybe to make things a little easier, maybe um, since the museum's going to be in the middle of having people pop up there and I wonder if we could maybe give somebody in town some business and actually have it somewhere that already has food and beverages and we don't have to worry about that like river sticks outside and literally it's just a oh, yeah that's a good idea a meet up like maybe we ha you know what I mean make it really yeah meet up normal. yeah river sticks would be would make it really easy I feel like and then you know we we don't have to worry about food drinks and that gives them business too so yeah yeah they Just also have right. like a food truck that comes what do you guys okay. think it's the friday night right so sometimes finicky fork is there but i would co coordinate with river sticks to make sure there is somebody there for food what do you guys think? Or if we asked, you know, Strong Style to stay open late for us, or they may be open later at that point. I don't know. It's just like a thought. We could maybe do it in a pre-existing place that has food and drinks, and then we, you know, we're really just hanging out, talking to people. It might be a little yeah. easier. I think River Sticks is well, fine because it's so yeah. it's open, and if we have thirty artists and right. food and their friends, it would be a tight squeeze at Strong Style Coffee. So. Sure. Um, I mean, if, this is again the risk with weather, but river sticks could also be well, they have an indoor outdoor. But if we were to bring Marissa into this conversation, she could get the whole Mill Street. I mean, that's still a smaller space, but the Mill Street stage, she can get the seating and the lights on. And that's kind of nice because you have all the murals and some of the artists who are going to be involved in open studios are on display there. Um, do they serve anything besides coffee on Mill Street? Well, so they have they have beer and wine, I think. Yeah, um, so, so, uh, and they've got the, you know pastries and stuff. And for the the steward reception, she she made some nice um, like lemonades and iced teas that she was giving to people. But and then Finicky Fork provided sandwiches. Um, but the, the way Mill Street is set up, there is a counter space, so you could have a food truck or a caterer pop up in that that random little window that is seldom used, but it's designed for for a food truck or something to come by. So out of the three options, what do you guys feel, or the two options, what makes the most sense to everyone? I like the River Sticks idea because there's just more room there. I and do I too. They, and I think they have a broader a variety of stuff. Another thought I had, I've been looking at this new restaurant that just popped up, um, Tacos and Tequila. I wonder if they have a party room. I'm willing to call them and, and see what they, you know, what they, they, they would probably like. To, they do have, have another dining room downstairs, but it's not open yet. And it's a real hot spot right now. So I don't know if they'd be willing to give up a Friday night for us. But yeah. Kingston Island might, the Jamaican restaurant. Oh, Kingston Island. Yeah, do they have? Yeah, she... I've been there a couple of times and she, their, their bar side seems to do better business, but their restaurant side is usually pretty empty. And I think they're, they might be, they might be willing to do something. All right. Well, why don't I take it on? I'll call both the, 
I've been curious about them anyway. So I'll call Tequila and Tacos and um, Kingston Island and see if there's anything there. Um, and I'll call River Sticks too. And um, River Sticks, you have the option if it's a nice warm summer night, mm -hmm. great. Yeah. But yeah. There's a, if it is inclement weather, they've got a pretty decent inside space and people, you know, the night before, they're just going to go in and maybe meet and greet, have something to eat, just a drink, yeah. and, and then they're out. Yeah. yeah, I picture people in jeans or whatever because they've been setting up their pop-up and all of that. So it's just kind of like that, that kind of a thing. Yeah, the yeah. weather could be bad. I remember there was a, um, one of the blacksmith festivals that was really cold and miserable. Oh no. So we could have oh, yeah. really nice weather or we could have, you just don't know at yeah. the end of September. I do like that River Sticks, it gives you that option of either or. Mm. Well, let's and it can River hold a lot of people. And see what they tell us. And yeah. um, if, um, so, if I they're mean, wonderful, you're gonna, you're I'll gonna do, do that. I'll research that on. and then get back to us. I, I'll get back to you, yeah. Thanks, Eileen. Um, Mill, Mill Street is nice because uh, they are actually a location that um, artists can pop up at. I don't know if anyone has taken on, taken, uh, has uh, decided to do that, but. No, do we have any pop ups in the Mill Street area? No, no, no. so far, no. Mostly it's the museum and the in your church. Yeah. Do you need any more space? No, so Great. far at the moment, no. So I should I should I stop my process of trying to get the upper commons? I ah, I don't think we have anything to put there at the moment unless we want to ha have some of us hang out there as like a but I think it would probably make more sense to hang out at Mill Street because it's close to the cafe and although she's not going to be open on Sunday that's the thing I don't know. Mm -hmm. You could ask yeah, her. Uh, yeah, I'm. Yeah, that would be a good. Actually, that's a great idea. She, she might open. She, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, so she might do. She she's doing it for first Thursday. She might if she knows she's going to get the foot traffic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good question, Audrey. I at the moment we don't have anyone that needs it. Yeah. So I will carry on with it. If and we case, have it, we have and it. And also so that it can be a uh, point spot. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, um, the creative meet and greet, we had slated it for 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. on that Friday. Okay. So if we want to, yeah, if we think that still makes sense, great. If we want to change the time, that's something to discuss at the next um, large council meeting. I like it. Cool. Okay. Um, uh, we don't have to, uh, uh, should we choose, uh, we need to start thinking about grant training dates as well. Um, we only have two minutes, so maybe that's something for everyone to just think about, um, and we can set those dates at the next meeting so that we can announce it at the grantee reception. And that sounds like a good idea. We've got an awful lot on our plate right now. Yeah. Um, but Eileen, speaking of grant training, would you be interested in facilitating those meetings since you're the grant? Sure, I could do that. Or do you feel comfortable enough um, walking people through the, I think yes. the grant application might change. Um, I know they were discussing that, but yeah. I could do it. Joe used to like to do it. Do you think Joe has, you know, you might put, see if, if he would I mean, want yeah, to Joe's do it. done it before, but I was just thinking since you're the grant coordinator that that would be. Well, that's true. And I don't, I, I can certainly do it. Cool. All right. Um, do we want to start meeting in person? Please. Yes. It's very hard to get a discussion going, looking at a square. <laughs> <laughs> Tamar, since or Tamar and Eileen, you both have been to the meeting room, right? You've been to the legislative building. Nope, yes. not yet. No, nope. I haven't. Oh no, maybe not. Would it? No, I'm no, just wondering if they have like a projection screen because we share a lot of things off of the computer for the PR subcommittee. Is there anywhere in FATV we could meet? 
if we're going to have uh, yeah, this. Yeah, they do have a meeting room. In the past. Wouldn't that make sense? In the past, we've met at uh, the college. Yeah. Yeah. But and there's, there's, there's a lot of great conference rooms with, you know, screens and projectors and don't ask me to find out how to run one in five minutes, but <laughs> that's why uh, I think we might be better if FATV could put us up. We're, all, we're also yeah, a small group. So if you've got a laptop, it's probably easy enough to show certain things on the screen in the smaller conference rooms at City Hall. That's true. That's a good you point. You say too. so. Um, yeah, you know, what? I, I like the idea of FATV since we will often be talking about FCC TV anyways. Um, and also it's a little bit more rounded so that, you know, I feel like that's a little bit easier for the PR subcommittee boom, that we can all look at each other. What were we going to say, Jesse? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, she looked like. She oh, oh, no, just I, I think um, FSU still has some restrictions, so I don't think that's a possibility yet. Mm. Okay. Yeah, my only thing with FSU is if we were to meet there, I would like to have like a the same meeting spot every single month. Oh, mm. because um, that was confusing. Well, it's, it's worth posing the question, I think. Yeah. Right? They can right. only say no. Okay, um, for the next meeting, I will uh, try to figure out where we can meet. Okay. In person. Uh, if I can't do that in time, because I'm also doing a lot of things, we might just meet virtual again next August, but hopefully in September we can <laughs> meet in person. Okay, okay. Okay, it's fair. Awesome, okay. I think that is it. Um, there's concerts on the common tomorrow. Go check out uh, a fine connection, uh, Grateful Dead van at concerts on the common. And Eddie will be playing every Sunday uh, live jazz that has been extended by Tamar. Wow. Um, and uh, yeah, check out those concerts. Check out FCC TV tomorrow. It is 5:32. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>